All right, functions, domain, and range, day two. What we're looking at here are three functions, and we have to determine, sorry, three relations, where we have to determine whether they're functions or not, and then we will state their domain and their range. In order to do this, we have to look at each one separately. First of all, let's identify whether each of these are functions or not. The first one. This one here is a line. It is a function because it passes the VLT. So if I take a vertical line, for example, a vertical line that we draw, and I take that vertical line and I drag it across the graph, what will happen is we will find that that vertical line, when I draw it across the graph, will turn into, will not touch the graph more than once. So I take the vertical line and I drag it across the graph and it doesn't touch it more than once. Let's check the other two. The same concept. It touches the parabola once and only once. And what you see here as you drag this vertical line across is that the vertical line will not touch this graph more than once. So the first one is a function, the second one is a function, but let's check the third one. You will see that this is not a function. So the third one is just a relation. And let me prove let me write out how you would describe you would explain yourself. So you would write that it is a function. Okay, so you will write that this is represents a function. And why is it a function? Well, because it's a graph, you can say it passes the vertical line test, the VLT, is one way to justify it. Another way to justify it's a function is that you can restate the definition. That is, for every x, there is only one y. Now, with that idea, you have now justified why it is a function. Do the same for the second one, and you can say it is a function because for every x, there is only one y, or you can say because it is a graph, and only because it's a graph, you can say it passes the VLT. The VLT is a test to see whether it's a function or not. The last one represents the fact that this is not a function. It is only a relation. Okay, it is a relation only because, because it fails the VLT. And I can show you how it fails the VLT by on the graph we identify the two points one here and one here where this fails the VLT. So these two points here fail the vertical line test and therefore it is only a relation. Alright, moving on. We need to now state the domain and range of each of these graphs. To state the domain and range, we set it in set notation. The domain of the first one starts off as every domain starts. X belongs to real, such that, now, what's happening here? From left to right, if we were to draw out, let's say, a number line, we can see for this first graph that it starts at the leftmost from negative infinity and it goes to the rightmost to positive infinity. That is, one more time, it starts off in negative infinity from left to right all the way to positive infinity with no breaks. And because of that, that means that my domain is just x belongs to real. That it is every value in the x axis. I can find a y. 
The range represents all the y values. So you begin as y belongs to real, but this time we look at how low does it go to how high. So for domain, we go from left to right. Domain, we go from left to right, and that represents your domain. Now, if you were to do range, you would go from low to high. So you start off low, and you go up to high. How low and high does this function go? That is your range. In this case, our range here starts off in negative infinity, and it goes as high as positive infinity with no breaks. So it's y belongs to real in set notation, and that's the end of it. And in fact, lucky for us, this represents every linear function, with the exception of vertical or horizontal, represents, um, every linear represents, has this, sorry, domain and range. In the next one, we must state the domain and range. So how far left to how far right? In this case, it goes left from negative infinity, so it goes, gets wider and wider, all the way to positive infinity. That will be our domain. So that is, our domain is the same as the linear, where x belongs to real, and that's the end of it. Now, for range, what we have for range is how low does it go? Well, folks, in this case, it reaches as low, or it starts as low as negative 2, Negative 2 is where it starts, it actually touches negative 2, and continues upwards. So that value is negative 2, and it goes upwards, so from negative 2 to infinity. That is, y belongs to real, such that y is greater than or equal to negative 2. And the last one. It isn't a function, but we can still state the domain and range. That is, for domain, we look at how far left does it go. It goes from negative infinity all the way up to 1. So that means all the values in the domain are, well, let's see, x belongs to real, such that x is less than or equal to 1. That is, x belongs to real such that x is less than or equal to 1. The range goes from how low to how high. So let's look at the range. It starts as low as negative infinity, goes as high as positive infinity. So from negative infinity to positive infinity. That's how this function goes. So from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. And that means our range is just y belongs to real. And that's the end of it. All right, let's look at another example. So here we're looking at an exam these are all the examples we had in the beginning. We're going to move on to another question. Here we are, two, three new examples. The first one talks, we need to state the domain and we need to identify if it's a function or not. So draw your vertical line test and notice the vertical line test touches this more than once. You just have to identify two pieces where it hits twice, and we can state that it is a relation. So this is a relation, and we can now state the domain. It is a relation because it fails the VLT, and it is enough to draw the VLT on the diagram and identify two places where it fails it. The next piece you're to do is state the domain and range. So the domain for this 
is actually only one value for x. That is this one value. If you wrote x belongs to real, that's okay, but not really, because you have to understand that x is equal to just 2. If you wrote x belongs to real, such that x is equal to 2, I'll take that. But understand that really the only value for x is just 2. Now the range. What is the range in this particular example? Well, when you read from low to high, you will see that it starts at negative infinity and goes up to infinity. That is, that would mean that we are looking at y belongs to real. Okay, next question. Is the next one a function? Because remember, we take the vertical line test right here and we drag it across our graph to see if it touches the graph more than once. Now some of you might think it touches twice here or possibly here. But remember, what does an open circle imply? Well, an open circle means that this particular open circle right here means that it doesn't touch it. It doesn't include that number. The closed circle over here means that it definitely touches it. So it doesn't touch it at one spot, but does touch it at the other, which identifies the fact that there is only one value that crosses it when I slide my vertical line test. This will only have one, and as will this one. So folks, here what we have is a, uh, is a function. So we identify this as a function. So we write down on here, function, and why is it a function? Well, you can write for every x there's only one y, or because it's a graph, we can justify by saying it passes the VLT. Next, you have to be able to state the domain and range. Domain and the range. The domain in this case, let's look at it. The domain starts at negative infinity and goes all the way to infinity without any breaks from left to right. Don't forget that range is domain is from left to right. So x belongs to real is our domain. Now our range is slightly different. It is different because you have to identify that it's only three possible values. One here at the first horizontal line, one here at the second horizontal line, and one at the third horizontal line. So one at each one of these. That is, now we have to write out our range. Our range in this case will be y equals the three values, that is 1, 3, and 4. All right, last one. With this, is it a function? It passes the VLT? Yes, it does. So it is a function, and it passes the VLT. Function, and passes the VLT. Now, next we have to state the domain and range. All right, so the domain is x belongs to real. And that's all, folks. Why? Because this line is going to be going continuing. This is going to continue forever, ever in this direction. So negative infinity starts, and it goes all the way up to positive infinity. So x belongs to real. The range, well, there's something hidden in here that you will have identified when you have your test. And that is a hidden line. That is, this hidden line exists right on the x-axis. It is a hidden dotted line called the asymptote. This asymptote, let's spell it out, asymptote, is an imaginary line where the graph does not cross. So the asymptote 
is like a little barrier. It's telling you where the line does not cross. So this particular, sorry, any function doesn't have to be a line. It, the curve gets closer and closer to this asymptote, but doesn't touch it. So in terms of the range, it goes from negative infinity up to zero, but we don't include the zero. As we get so close to it, it essentially will look like zero. So y will be strictly less than zero. And that, folks, is the range. Moving on. Let's look at this graph. We need to state the domain and range of this graph. Is it a function? Yes, it is. Why is it a function? Because it passes the VLT. The asymptotes that you see there, the dotted lines, are only that, asymptotes. And in fact, there is one more asymptote that you hardly can see, and that is the horizontal asymptote. So this function passes the VLT, so we're good with that. I can take a vertical line and draw it across, or drag it across. Um, now we have to state the domain and range. So the domain for this function, and then the range. So from left to right, the domain starts at negative infinity, and then all of a sudden, it stops or jumps at the vertical asymptote. Then the graph continues on th that side until it jumps the asymptote again to continue its journey all the way to infinity. So there are two stops in this graph. So when I state the domain, I state it as x belongs to real such that x does not equal certain values. What are they? Well, they are negative 3 and 2. The next one, the range, talks about how does the range affect the problem. Well, with the range, we're looking at how low does it go. Well, folks, that will be negative infinity. Goes up to 0, does it touch it? No, nope, it doesn't. But then it does a jump and starts again, that is, goes up to zero, knows there's a hole, does a little jump, and continues its pattern from one all the way up to infinity. So how do we draw this out in terms of set notation? x belongs to real, such that x does not equal negative three and two, and the second part is x y belongs to real, such that y is less than 0 or or you can use the u symbol to represent or one or the other or y is what? What is that second piece saying? This piece right here. Yep, all of you should be saying y is greater than or equal to 1. And we close the bracket. So we have y is less than 0 and y or y is greater than or equal to 1. So the two pieces. Okay, moving on. Alright folks, well, that's the end of the video. Have a numerical day.